everybody, this is Anja Skandia from Digitality and today I'm with a researcher, Cooper Mathwell. He has a lot of experience in here, this kind of virtual world. So Cooper, welcome. Well, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to tell people about my research and especially to share with uh, Colombians down south of the border, <laughs> as we would say in the state. So much for your time again. So. What is this all about? Because I see cubes around, I see plates, I see sushi. What is uh, what you've been working on lately? So if you could share us a little bit about it, it would be great. Okay. Uh, I am a cognitive engineer, and all that means is that I research how the brain works and try to figure out ways that it works that we're not taking advantage of. And I think the easiest is to give you an example. I'm going to start out by showing you a few pieces of sushi on the plate, and I might ask you which plate has the three on it. What's the color of the plate that has three? Color green. The green. Okay, so the green has three, and that was pretty easy. But what we found out is yes. when we add more of them, our brain doesn't work quite so well. So let me go ahead, and I want you to tell me as quick as you can which plate's going to have seven on it. Okay, go. Okay. I will say the red one. Okay, you say the red one, and the red one has... Go ahead and count them now. Eight. Okay. Well, there's a part of the brain, that, and it turns out all birds and mammals can do this, and even three-week-old children. Let me show you here on this, on this presentation board. Here we have this child. He's three weeks old, and he can tell how many dots how many syllables and how many times somebody jumps. So this is that part of the brain that I'm researching. So we know the brain can do that, but we don't apply it to mathematics. So let's go back to the plate. How can I help our scene? You had trouble when we get to more quantities, and so does everybody else. But watch what happens now. I want you to tell me how many have eight on them. The one in the center, the purple one. Okay. Was that easier than it was before? Of course, it was organized. It was organized. Did you multiply, though, to figure it out? No, I just think the parts in four. I, I just uh, see because it was four on one side and the other one's exactly the same organized, so it's, it's eight. So it was easier. And we found out that by organizing this, our ability to see numbers becomes really quick. Now, I didn't need to come into Second Life for this, because I've actually seen people do plate experiments with blueberries. There's a doctor from the from University of Buffalo, and we happen right now to be on the Boise State University campus. They invited me to set up this exhibit on visualizing math, on seeing numbers like we can't see. But I will tell you why I came into Second Life. First, you've noticed that I was able to quickly show objects and control what object you saw. You saw. I was also able to take you over to a presentation board, and we could go through a regular presentation. The real power, though, that I came into um, Second Life was I wanted to be able to show uh, other quantities that got ex extremely large. And so here we're looking at 23 little things. We see two stacks of 10 and three little ones. That doesn't really require Second Life. We could have done that. Um, but what if I want to look at this quantity? Now you're looking at 2,000. Those little cubes of which we can count our cubes real quick, right? You just look at them. You say there's two of them. You can look at the squares, and there are three of those. You, know, we, you look at your segs, and that's your short for line segment. There are four of those. And then you look at the ones. There are five of those. So you or I can pretty quickly pull out that you're looking at 2,345. That really didn't require me to come into Second Life either, but that would have been a challenge to do in a classroom. But if I change the quantity to a very large quantity, and now we find out that this was very, very difficult. This is impossible to really do in real life. For me to instantly 
show you and let you be able to walk around. I, you can take your camera off now if you want, pan around a little so they can see the 3D-ness of what you're looking at. And as you do, I'll, I'll talk about it. Those great big rods that you see in the back, those hold 10,000 little of those cubes. And they're called seg of cubes. They're a line segment of these big cubes. Then we have the six cubes that are 10 by 10 by 10. Those are 1,000. Then we have the four squares, which are 10 by 10, which is 100. And then we have the two segs, which are only 10 each. And we have the three ones. So you're looking at the number 86,423. Now, I would have loved to have had a slide on there to talk about the impact that our language has, especially Spanish language, has with the decimal number system. And people think that numbers are the decimal number system. And it turns out that's just a standard. We standardized on them, and we did because we have 10 fingers. But what if I go look at a different packaging scheme? What if I go and look at things that come in eight? Here, if you look at this, these packages only hold eight. So the little segs down there, you can count them if you want, there are eight in those little segments. And the squares are eight by eight segments. And then the cubes are eight by eight by eight. Now, this doesn't sound really profound. I can show you some other examples. Let me go show you uh, the packaging them in, in terms of seven. And there you see one seg. You could probably do it really quick yourself now. Do you see the one, six, four, two, three? Do you see that? Yes. It's organized. Yeah, because we're taking advantage. That's why I had the sushi plates out there. To show you that you organize things, your eye can see them. And all we're doing is looking at the different organizations. Then I could even go down to base six, and we could see that there are... You want to take a shot at what you're seeing? Now I'm going to show you the device that actually puts these on the board. It's right there to your left. You can see it. And it's got that subquan. So there's how you spell it. It's Latin for subitas quantitas, which means sudden quantity. So it's a natural word, comes like all our other words. And there's quantity, which comes from the word quantitas. And what I want to show you, though, is you see that it says the subquan is 452. And when we looked at those different sheets, we see 452. Yeah, 452 and base important. 9. Four, five, two, so I can jump like this. Yes. So they're all four, five, two, and and they're all four squares, five segs, and two ones. If we go back to the squid, to the right of the squid, that's called the SQ Interactive 3D Squid. We see this bamboo board, and on it we have these equations. And notice in the green how it stands out: four, five, two. Each one has four six squares, then there's four seven squares, then there's four eight squares, four nine squares, and you can see the objects, yes, I right? Do. I mean, look at look at the sevens. Do you see the squares? I'm not teaching you anything. All I'm doing is letting your eyes see what your eyes can see. And what your eyes can see are these equations. And you didn't know it. Like I said before, I'm and, just and really it, rolling my eyes because... Something that usually for me it took maybe two or three years to learn and to understand the shape of the numbers and you just teach me in let's say 15 minutes maybe less uh, Am I correct because I feel that here you're just showing me a new way a new language to understand the numbers and The old-fashioned way that I understand it took me at least maybe two years to understand them Okay, let me see if I can rephrase I'm showing you what your eyes could always see, and I'm giving you a language to describe what your, how your brain's working. Your brain is seeing this pattern, this 452. We don't have a word for it in a language. Now you know the word. It's called subquan. That is the subquan of this pattern that's down in your chat. The subquan is that, those numbers down there. So when we subquant it, we see the 452. We see their shapes. And then from their shapes, we can see 
We call it a meta pattern. It's just a pattern of patterns. And so the pattern we saw were the four squares, the five segs, and the two ones. The meta pattern is that it's four, five, two in every single base. And it turns out the general equation is down at the bottom. All of a sudden, we're in algebra two. 4x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals q, the quantity. We have a general equation, and we can now predict it in case my base or x was 100. It'd be 4 times 100 squared plus 5 times 100 plus 2, if that pattern continued. So if we look at the oil that's being shipped out of Columbia, if we look at uh, food supplements that are coming into Columbia, or we look at how much food we eat, and we look at how, how fast our money's coming in from our, our weekly paycheck or monthly uh, commission. We could see a pattern and we could then predict whether we have enough money to buy that Mercedes Spence or whether we have to buy a, a, you know, a VW bug that's used. We, we can see. We can understand numbers. We no longer will be an enumerate society, just like we used to be an illiterate society, and what was invented was the Guggenheim Press, and it allowed us to print mass quantities of literature, which enabled people to learn how to read. Here, I'm taking Second Life. It's not that Second Life is Guggenheim's <laughs> printing press, but it's very similar. I'm taking it, and I'm allowing us to see these shapes, and from the shapes, we can then see the equations. Let's do another example just for fun. Okay. Just so people please. And I want you and I want you to uh, to describe to me. Okay. I'll try to keep it super simple. I want you to describe to me what you see. Okay, and we'll start out with base six because we're looking at base six. Okay. Describe it to me. Give me the number of what you see and what their shapes are. I see four, three, five, one. Okay, now describe them. For what? 4,350. For what, what's the shape? Are those squares? Are those segs? Are those ones? What's the four? Is the... What shape is that? Does it look like a dice? Yes, it is. <laughs> so it's four, four cubes, uh, three squares, five segs, and one ones. That's right. And then if I go to base... Nine, and the, and the number is the same, isn't it? The shape is four the same. cubes. Is four, 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 yes, four cubes. Three squares. Yes, three squares, a five, a six, and one cube. One. Isn't one. that amazing? Yes, it's really fascinating. It's something very innovating on how to teach math and use technology as a part of the tool, like the right hand for, for teaching and to have a divergent thinking on how should be the quants and all the shape of the numbers should be teach in a very easy way. I wanted to ask you, since you're using this kind of tool, have you noticed that the students are learning much faster than the old fashioned way? Well, that, that, I mean, there is actually two parts to that problem. Um, the, the first part is I'm teaching numbers in a very different way. And so it's not the tool, it's not necessarily Second Life that's making that go faster. It's that the focusing on shapes and stuff appeal to the brain. But now the second part is, Second Life does make me able to put out these patterns quicker. And it still leaves that three-dimensional view. Uh, you can see why I have to have three dimensions. I mean, this is a, this is. Yes, you're controlling my camera. Right. I, and I just learning all over. I'm a psychologist, so for me, number is something. <laughs> Yeah, and so here, this biggest shape is a Sega Cubes, but you're looking at the three-dimensionality, and 
uh, if you want, you can take your camera away for a minute because it'll it'll start right where you are, and just pan around the shape so that they so that the audience gets a feel. These are three dimensional objects, and the people that come into Second Life can get up and walk around, and this three dimensionality that you can walk around and see is what virtual worlds bring to reality. And the more accurate the virtual world is, in this case, Second Life does a very good job. There are other platforms like Unity, but they're really, they're really high-end. They're made for very high-end graphics, and so they take really a graphic designer to a uh, graphic programmer to, to do Unity. What Second Life has done is kind of reduce, taken that away and allow people to create uh, artifacts. Um, so here, I'm looking at this room. And so I was able to just create some chairs, create some tables, throw some sushi down on the table. Now we're looking at our sushi. Create some plates, serve some plates. And these things are all close to reality. And this is what makes this virtual world called immersive learning because you forget where you're looking at. You forget that you're in a virtual world. You forget that you're looking at these made-up plates. And you start focusing on what's the quantity on the plate. You start focusing on the lesson. You, you're, you're looking at this one at the base sheet, uh, base A, which is base 10. Uh, you're looking and you're seeing the 4, 3, 5, 1, 3. And you're, and you're forgetting that this is a, it is not a game. This is a graphic, three-dimensional graphic tool for creating a virtual world. And here you can see we're actually in the corner of a building. And the reason we use the, the, the sushi bar is there was a virtual world's best practices in education, and their theme was Japanese. And we had no idea when we set up the squid. There's the SQ, the subquan, interactive 3D. That's that little black device. So we then called it the sushi bar because we were using sushis to count. We had no idea that that theme would be popular and it would entice people because it became closer to a reality that they could relate to. People have gone out to eat. They've sat down. They've been served. They've counted. You know, somebody said you were going to get eight spring rolls. You wanted to get your eight spring rolls on your sushi. If you're going to get two tacos, you want to make sure you're getting two tacos, not one. And, and so people are used to the numbers, and we put them now in a place where they are comfortable. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense because usually when I when I the teacher that I had to teach me algebra uh, algebra he okay he teach me and everything but when I ask him what is this good for my life where I will put it to serve in my life what it will be everything so the the answer was okay you need to get a grade but here is something that you can actually interact and help you take decisions for your real life. Otherwise, for me, it will be like, okay. Well, let's give a real life this. example, though it's not appealing to everybody, but there are some that are appealing to everybody, like how much money is coming into your bank account and how much is going out. Learning how to control your calories so that you know whether you're eating healthy and getting the right minerals. If, you, if you're relatives or somebody, a good friend has cancer, you want the doctor to be able to determine if the cancer cells are growing faster than the medicine's working. Is there hope? You want to know if the national debt is, is out of control. You want to know if your government is going to collapse. These things are very real and they come from number patterns. I'm going to give you a little sample here. You may want to take the camera off and zoom in a little closer on this picture, and I'll tell you when to escape back. Zoom in so that you can so that you can see that picture. I see like little dragons walking around. Okay, so here we're using Second Life to mimic Second Life. So <laughs> what we're doing here is. We're actually seeing this little blue bat dog thing. If you zoomed in close enough to read the text, there's some text that describes it. But basically, he's running across the screen. We took a 
snapshot of him every second so we can see him moving, how far he's gotten. Then we went back and we put a ruler where he ran. Then we measured it and we put it in a table. And there you see the six seconds, 27 feet, seven seconds, 31 feet. Can you see that on your camera? Yes, I see everything very well. Okay. Very, very, so, uh, film them, yes. so we're trying to see how fast this little guy is working. Now, this is classic algebra problem, but we make it very hard. By the time you get to see this, you've had to learn multiplication, division, you've learned coefficients, you've learned exponents. I mean, we've done so much math that people have no idea. Most of their eyes have glazed over. They simply can't see it. Well, but me, if you look, if if you put me in a in a why people should learn this, uh, well, I'm not sure about people who likes to shoot or hunt or is in military basics. For me, it's, it makes totally sense. Because How about you're driving your car and the traffic's a little slower than normal? How far are you going to go if you're going 45 miles an hour? How far are you going five hours? The traffic, uh, yes, should make sense. See, you to don't. Traffic, or for example, you do kilo kilometers per hour, don't you? Yes, we use kilometers. We use um, what's the name? Okay. Uh, Metric system. Yes, exactly. You use feet. That's we right. Use, we use centimeters. <laughs> That's at base ten. That's you are base ten. Give me back your camera. Uh, you are base ten centric. Everything you like to look at and talk about is this quantity. You're ignoring base eight, base seven, base six, base five. And do you see the pattern in those? It looks the same. The numbers are four, four, three. Four, three again. They say four, three. And so if we went and looked at our board, we would see that there it is. Four times six is 24 plus three is 27. Four times seven is 28 plus three is 31. Aren't those in this exact same number, 27, 31, 35, that we saw? In our presentation, if we look at our little blue bat, look at them. They're recorded right there. 27, 31, 35, 39. Same numbers. And But we see when we put them into a place, our brain immediately picks up. It's 4 times a seg, 4 segs plus 3, or 4 times x plus 3. So at 100, you should be able to do that in your head. For 100, what would the quantity be? Four times a hundred plus three. Yeah, but it's much easier as you show it up because, for example, for me, that I'm not a natural English speaker, to so say, for example, four plus six, one <laughs> plus three, plus three. For me, it's like okay, I need to think slowly. But here, that's, you just put that's my, right. my brain works ten times faster than just thinking in one way, in one. Uh, in one line, here right. you pull me to think in a perception where I can look at the numbers in a three-dimensional way. That is much easier for me to understand what you want me to to learn right now because now right now I feel like a student. <laughs> right now, you actually think that you could learn this. Yes, totally. And if you learn this, let me tell you what numbers are. People don't really understand. Some well, some people do, but. A lot of people don't understand what numbers are for. Numbers are the most advanced tool mankind has ever created. And it turns out it's built into our brain, so it's hard to say whether we created it or not. That lets us predict the future and go backwards and determine what happened in the past. Because when we see a pattern, I could see this pattern. Let me say that on Monday... I saw four of the, I saw 27 little uh, plants popping up in my yard. On Tuesday, I saw 31. On Wednesday, I saw 35, and I'm starting to get worried. How many plants is it going to take? And the guy who wants to come out to exterminate my plant says, I'll be out there in about 15 days. Well, I look at this now, and I can say, well, in 15 days, I'll have 4 times 15. That's 60 plus 3. I'll have 63 plants in my yard. That's not good. So I can predict what's going to happen. Numbers help you predict. And so if we can help people understand numbers better. So that's what my research is. And I, I hope you can see 
why I came into Second Life. So that people could see this stuff. And students, well, people like you, uh, and I've had teachers, other teachers, I've had students, I've had, you know, youngsters. We actually don't use Second Life in, uh, for younger, real young kids. But we've tested this with four and five-year-olds. And they can tell us, they can tell us this number. They were able to say four, three, five, one, three. There was Even though they couldn't count past ten. So we can say that the people were born with this ability, but after they pass through the difficulties through the process and at school or at university could get more complicated depending on what they're teaching. Is is that so? Because sometimes I feel like schools castrate the creativity and the ability to understand a problem in a different uh, perception or position where everybody is uh, usually is. Right. It's not the school's fault. you got to understand. We have decided because we have ten fingers that ten is the way to count everything. But if you go to a to a grocery store, you'll find out that things are packaged and they're not always in ten. If you buy tennis balls, they're in packages of three. If you buy uh, ho hums, they're twink Twinkies. They come in packages of two or three. Um, you know, uh, uh, golf balls come in different packages. You panties come in a package of five at Walmart or something. You know what I mean? Wherever you, whatever you buy, a six pack of Coke. It comes in a package of six. That's why we call it a six pack. But things come in different packages of 10. But we got caught up on just 10. We standardized on 10, the decimal system. And the problem is, when we did that, we lost the ability. See, just looking at this or looking down in your chat, looking at these numbers, look at them in chat. I mean, these are big numbers. For six, you have 6,021. For seven, 10,888. I mean, I don't see any pattern in those numbers. But when we put them into a subquan, when we subquan these, the pattern, um, that's not the right one. Uh, four, three, five, one, three. Let me update that board. It's got a different control on it. When we put them into a subquan, all of a sudden in each base, we see, if I look at that top line, I see the four, three, five, one, three. And when I look at it in, in, in real life, you want to say, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is as real as if I created these and stuck them into real life. That's what immersion means. There's the four, three, five, one, three. It's the same thing. And so... We're able to we're able to do something we've never done before. We're able to open up our eyes and finally see numbers. And we have found out that people like you, if you come back in a week or two weeks, you'll actually be faster at determining these numbers than you are now. Because right now you've got a little bit of awe, shock and awe. No, you got a little bit of awe of and I have I've seen, an overload of information right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But it turns out you've discovered in this process that your eyes can do this. You've discovered your eyes can do this. You didn't have to memorize the process. You didn't have to memorize the form. Your eyes look at this and you see 43513. Three. And there's nothing I can do to take that away from you. And you can sleep on it for a month and come back and your eyes will see four, three, five, one, three, and you can't stop them. So we've turned on the brain to numbers. That's what we're doing. We're working with the University of Washington. We have some connections with University of Oregon. We have connections with Oregon State University. Actually, I think on my Prezi, I think my last slide, I don't have a simple way to, Go to my last slide. 
I, I can make one. I just didn't do it. I think my last slide has a list. Nope. Yeah, it does. There we go. Uh, nope, we don't. This just talks about who we are, how to partner with us, how do we re retweet, post, or email, whatever. Get the word out to others. You just saw visual. You saw something visual that you know helps everybody that struggles with math. And the Spanish-speaking people are no different than the Americans or the French. They're no different. We have we all have trouble with our languages, and so we invite people to to get involved to to come onto our website. Um, and like I said, I was naming off some of the universities. I thought I had a list. There are 10 universities in Second Life that are interested in what we're doing. And some, like Boise State University, have given us land to, to show this. And this means that you, Honest, can bring in anybody from your country or anywhere in the world who has a computer with graphics to access Second Life. And you can come into the Squid Sushi Bar and you can look at numbers. You see, this is a part that is fascinating me about Second Life because first, everybody is the same and, they, and the information, the knowledge can be reachable for any one of us that maybe 10 years before it was something that was so far away as the world it is. Now, because we're using this, the network, we using these immense walls can put it all back together in a presence like our avis, like in these scenarios like this, which is our all interactive and can give us the in a, such a easy way to reach the information and to understand how it is like now. Okay, Professor Magbeth, I have only two more questions for you, and the one is about the information. You see, since we have um, internet, the information has been moving around, comes and goes. Since you're using Second Life, how you see the information is moving? I mean, usually we have the teacher that is teaching, dictating a class or giving a class, and the students are sitting down and paying attention. But I see here the interaction is very high, very immersive, and you can get the full attention of the students. How, what would be your position about it? What would be your opinion about it? I think what we have here, I hate using the word paradigm shift because it's used so much, but it is descriptive of what's happening. There is a change from the, from the information being just you know, words that are given. I stand up and I would speak on a lecture. I would have you read my book. And I would try to dump words into your brain. And your brain would try to figure out what the pattern was. And then, your, then the word pattern would start to form a picture in your mind, a visual image of what was really going on. And in Second Life, I can do this the correct way. I can show you the visual pattern and let you see visually what it is. And then I can take you to the symbols and take you to the words. But first you get to experience, you get to experience what things really look like. You get to, your information is in a way now that the eye is already familiar with. This is your world. This is the one you walk around in. So if I can start presenting the information so that you can experience pieces of it, you get a picture of what the pattern is that I'm talking about, like I built here for you. I kept building a pattern. Then when I go to the words or to the symbols, then this makes, starts making sense to you. Yes, totally. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm just fascinated seeing of the cubes and how you can hold information in just making the shape 
and showing in a different way that we're not, maybe like for me, we're not used to, to see. And one last question. I see that um, you have this everything very organized. Your theory about how we sh should shape the numbers has um, it makes a lot of a lot of sense because I, for you, I see that uh, it's very amazing how you open the eyes to the people, at least for me, how they should look like. What will be a recommendation for future, future teachers that would like to take part in this virtual world? Okay, well, the, one of the benefits of Second Life or something like this is it is very, uh, very uh, robust. It, there's, there's, a lot you can, there's a lot you can see. Like here we're building buildings so we can, we can build structures of any period, of any age, of any people that people can experience and, and they're, they're familiar with what these things look like and then we can introduce the unfamiliar or the content that we're trying to, to show and we can keep going back and forth between these. But the big benefit that you're experiencing here is that by taking the camera control away from the student, I have stopped one of the biggest detriments of using Second Life as an educational tool. And that's because people would say, it takes too long to learn how to maneuver yourself in Second Life. It takes too long to build these. Well, um, there are a lot of builders that will build it, but you really need something that will control your camera so you can go solicit uh, interactive input and people can can vote and you can see real time what they're voting what they're what's happening to their voting uh, so that you could put up posters of information they're familiar with the poster and there's your QR code you can scan right off literally you can put your phone up scan the QR code that's on your computer screen and it will take you to our website so we're taking technology that occurs outside Second Life and bringing it inside and there's no level of additional learning. Um, so I would say make sure that you, you get a good system for maneuvering and there are a lot of programmers and stuff that will that have visual systems that will help you. And get somebody on staff. I, recently there's a gentleman up in Alaska, Don Bickley, and he just won an award from the Virtual Ward Consortiums because he used this camera technique to take somebody through a chemistry lab. And I've, and I've seen uh, another place where they take you through the uh, sexual parts of the body, and it's a college course on um, sexual reproduction. And you actually go inside the different organs, and you get a real good feel about what's going on, what kind of problems could happen, because you, you're there. Um, I've seen... Uh, reenactments uh, of Shakespeare and uh, of Hawthorne, of, of uh, you know, different Don Quixote. They're, they're different authors, and their work has been brought to life so you can experience it, walk through, and see the world like they saw it. So, depending on what your field is, and people would think that math was the most obscure field. It's like there is nothing real about it. Well, I'm telling you. There really is something very real about it. And when you can see it, you can now learn what the equations are. You, you can make that leap back to uh, reality and how it applies to reality. That would be my advice. Uh, come talk to the successful educators in Second Life. And uh, somebody said once to me, you know, Second Life is is a game and it's got too much going on and you really need to go to something like an open sim which is a compatible I mean and it's important for universities if they need a closed environment where nobody can just walk in um, then they can go take everything they build here if they own it and they can put it into the open sim world and have a dedicated place for them. what I have found though is that you just cut off the greatest resource the world has ever had. 
And that's people like Honest, who just happen. No, but you just happen to have seen or heard about what I was doing. And you came and you met me. And you didn't have to buy a ticket to fly to the United States. You didn't have to arrange for an expensive phone call. All of a sudden, here we are in Second Life. I, exp- I shared what I knew. And you could bring in somebody from Brazil. You could bring in somebody from, from Africa or from Asia or, or from Europe. Um, you can bring in anybody from anywhere in the world if they have access to the Internet. And you then get them to collaborate. You get their opinion from their culture, from their language, and you get to hear what they have to say. And you get to then implement that. Everything you're seeing here in this lab is a collaboration from seeing lots of other people. Uh, Like I said, when we were, when Boise State saw this, they said they wanted to create a room. They collaborated with me. They gave me space to put this display up. And so we come in and, and all of a sudden I have a place to show this. I didn't know these people at Boise State. I never met them in real life. I met them in Second Life. And I met programmers like the, the Don Bickley, the guy from Alaska. He's the first one I saw that really took control of your camera to show you how to do something. Well, you can see how effective I've used camera control now. And um, uh, that's, I would say if you're not coming into Second Life, it means you haven't talked to somebody that really understands. Oh, Professor Cooper, thank you so much for your time. I think I would like to have another interview with you where we can go a little bit more deep about your theory and what you want to show to the world. I think you have so much to offer for everybody, people like me that are not very used to seeing numbers in, a, in this shape, in this way, into content in a social simple, almost like you have it in your hand and have a full immersion about it. Thank you so much for your time. You are so welcome. It's a pleasure to meet you and to uh, avail yourself to film <laughs> okay. and send this out to the to the people of the world. I mean, you're like the, the first person to go to the Latino world, and we are so tickled to get this message out to everybody. This is good news, and we're trying to get it out to everybody.